Congratulations, your app is so popular that people are now using it late into the night. Hence, for your users, you need to provide them dark mode. In this video, you are gonna learn a fail-proof method for adding dark mode to your app. And where some of the other online resources uh, don't quite hit it is that there's some complicated CSS or there's just incomplete steps in terms of getting you all the way there. So in this video, here are the steps that we're gonna cover. Number one, identify all the styles in use. Now, the people who watch this channel are the kind that like to craft high quality of experiences for their users and really go the extra mile. But let's be honest, I'm gonna take a wild guess out there that myself included, sometimes we just wanna get something out there and we skip the steps of meticulously going through each of the visual elements on the page and adding styles to them. So as you see here in uh, step number one, applying styles if necessary, if they're not already applied, that's gonna be our first step and we're gonna see how to do that. And then we're going to also either know your dark code uh, hex colors. So perhaps you were given something like this, something that has primary colors. This is a you know very short version of some kind of brand thing that a designer might give you. So maybe if you're working in that environment, maybe you already have something or else I'm gonna give you the prompt that you can just drop into ChatGTP after we work our way through uh, this applying styles exercise. So you can find the, the opposite. So you have your light uh, styles and colors from this and you just list those out and then I'll give you the tech, uh, the prompt that you could drop in and get the hex codes from the AI. And then we're gonna see in step two, toggle to activate the dark mode, which we can see here and it's, it's as satisfying as it looks once it gets onto your app as well. When you reach this moment uh, where you hit that button, it's going to be great. Uh, so I'll show you the data setup for that. And there's some auto binding stuff that's going on. There's a piece of data on the user record. So it remembers if they have added dark mode or not. And then there's a UI set up via plugin. And then finally, yes, it is uh, setting the conditionals on the styles. So applying the dark mode hex colors that we get from here, and we'll see that all happen now. So we are applying styles, which is identifying all the visual elements, the text, the images, the icons, etc., the groups. This process, if you follow it for the example that we're gonna do on the screen, is gonna work the exact same way it will work on yours. And it's pretty simple. So it's just visually scanning the page so I can see that I have a logo image. I have a logo text up here in the top left. I have a menu icon and I have a menu, uh, let's call it item text. Now this text here and this text here is gonna be of the same style, same for these icons. And then down here at the bottom, what we have is username text. And then that leaves us with a, um, a shell group, which is basically the group around this, and then the page, uh, page background. Okay, with these in hand, I'm gonna put these onto a sheet, which I'm gonna offer for anyone else that would like to as well. We've got, basically we're gonna follow along if we've got all of our styles created, if we have them applied, and then when we have our dark style applied. And remember, the reason why we're doing this exercise is we're basically, trying to identify all our light modes so that we can get our dark mode from the AI. Now, of course, if you already have all of those things because you had a designer give you your dark mode colors, then this exercise isn't exactly uh, as useful, except for the fact that you'll still want to make sure that your styles are applied uh, and then you'll just skip right on to applying the dark stuff as well. So, okay, and for my specific build, I'll just note that I actually, uh, I forgot about the this arrow, this is its own group. We'll want to change the color on that, as we can see here in the example that that changes. And then also this arrow at the bottom is going to be uh, lightened just slightly. I've gone ahead and labeled them for what type of element they are, because that's how we'll organize when we do the styles. These are my hex codes that uh, just happen to be for this one. What you want to do, let's just take a look at what you would do in yours to find this. So basically you'll go here, you'll go into one of these items, and then you'll look at the hex code Three four four three zero five four. So this is the text color. Now that we have all this stuff set up, what we could do is get these set up into this format here, where I just have all of these items listed here. And then if we scroll down here, this page will include a prompt if you're interested in it, and that link will be available in the description. 
to be able to check that out. Um, also in the description, I'll just say that if you would like to build this sidebar, uh, that's going to be available as well. And uh, if you, it's going to be on the channel. But if you don't see it on the channel, just contact me. Reach out to me uh, at nocodeacademy.co forward slash contact. And let me know if you would like. I'm happy to give you early access, exclusive access to that. But what this is saying is just this AI will take the role of UX UI designer, pull some knowledge about popular uh, dark mode by taking my light mode colors, and will also ask it to yeah, get a final list of only the hex colors. So here it's going to give us these things. Okay, we can see that they line up. And then basically I wanted to do that. So all I have to do is grab this list, copy it out, drop it into here, boom. There are my dark mode hex colors. Okay, so now that these have all been decided, let's go into Bubble and we'll handle the work of applying these styles to the uh, to the elements on the page. So to remind us of where we are in this process is that we are applying the styles, which was first for identifying which elements would get the styles. But we went ahead once we had those hex codes is we went ahead with steps B and C here and we got those co uh, hex codes from our AI tool and then now we're gonna go and we're gonna apply the styles. This is not actually a video really about how to apply styles in Bubble. In fact, check out the video on the channel about applying styles if you wanna you know, know more about basically the whole um, kit and caboodle about doing that for your whole app. Basically everything that you would wanna do to keep all your styles straight. That'll be in another video, but we'll see the short version of that here. So here's a piece of text. Let's go and let's create a style for it. So I'm gonna create a style, I'm gonna call it dark mode uh, logo text. And so now that is created. So I could go over here and edit it, or uh, it's it, the, the act of creating it automatically applies it when you do it from here. So I highly recommend that, especially if you're doing this after the fact, that you do it from there. So here I'm looking at this icon, doesn't have any style, let me just give it a dark mode icon. And then this one here, this is actually the link. So I kind of split these out here. This one is the link, there's a menu item link, there's a menu item text. What that is in this world, again, you'll be looking at your elements. These are links up here, so that way they can open the link in a new tab, which I think is a really important point when you're working on SAS items, so people can open up their uh, things in the new tab and organize the world as they like. Another reason why uh, checking out this uh, particular tutorial on the channel is a, is a is an awesome thing to uh, to do if you're interested in the world of SAS get you hooked up with something pretty great. Now, okay, so that's a link. So I definitely will want to make sure that I have dark mode link. And that's basically it for here. Let me just apply the rest of these. So, okay, so by going through each of these and just comparing and making sure that we have them all there, all of the styles are created. And then of course they are all applied at the same time they get created. So that's great news. So taking a look back at our outline, the next thing that we'll do is we'll set up the data so that way we actually, like we could, we don't, we want to apply a conditional that'll make the dark mode work, but that conditional doesn't exist because we're checking if a yes, no is, uh, is there or not, and that yes, no is not created. Let's do that now. So we're going to go over to our user record, and on our user record, we're going to create a field. We're going to say dark, dark mode. That'll just be a yes, no. We'll create it and we'll say no for starters. And then back over here. So the next thing you want to do is grab a plugin. So we have we have actually set up one part. You know what? Let's let's actually tackle the data first. So over here on user, look for your dark mode and just go ahead for everyone. It's fine that uh, they can do this because we'll want to auto bind this in a moment. Next up, go and search for a plugin, grab the free toggle plugin. We'll note that it has elements toggle. So back over here on the page, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make some space for it here in my UI. And I'm going to drop it right where this icon is. So I can see here in my elements tree, that's the one I want to uh, drop it next to. So I'm going to do a search here for toggle. I'll drop that up into here and it will it will drop it right here. 
And so I can go ahead and delete that out. And maybe I just want a little bit of a lighter color to start out with here. And then, okay, here's the data work that we're doing here for this part. So we've, we've made field, we've done the privacy, now it's time to do the auto binding. So what you wanna do is on the group above that this is inside of, so let's look at this hierarchy on the left-hand side here. Toggle A, toggle, this is the group that has it. We're gonna to wanna to make sure that this group has a type user. And as long as that's there, then we can say auto bind to our parent element and we can go and find this dark mode field that we just created. This toggle, all it does is turn something on or off from a yes or no standpoint. So now we've been able to set up this, this part and the UI set up via plugin. All that's left to do is the satisfying part of applying dark mode hex colors to our styles, which that is, you know, with all of this setup, it's basically this is easy if you have the setup. And now let's dive into the easy part. So we have here these different uh, colors that we're gonna be using for the, basically we're turning the text to dark and we're turning the light background stuff, uh, sorry. We're turning the dark text to light and the light background stuff to dark. So let's go and add those styles in. So if we go over here to our styles area, and we'll note these. So now we can apply this conditional. And this is where the magic happens. And this is why, you know, following this process from the start where we set up all the styles, right? Because these are the, these are the important styles. Here now, here now we're applying this conditional to it. And we're saying that when dark mode is yes for this person, then the background color. So this is a, this is a group, this is this arrow. And so that is this one, this arrow collapse expand. So we're gonna take this color here and we're gonna drop it in there like that. And I'm gonna grab this, copy it, because basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through all of these and we're gonna add this. Now this is an extra one, so I'm just gonna skip that for now uh, because mine has a particular hover state here on this menu. Yours might not, that was just an extra item. But basically everything else we've identified in our list of stuff is here. So our background color now, so this is shell background. So if we look for shell here, we can take that and we'll change our background color now here to dark. Next up, our menu item link. This link here, it's this color. Now it's gonna be turning. And we'll just continue with our paste expression here. Font color here. Now, there's gonna be something special about this one because in this particular case, when this link is hovered, it turns uh, blue, which I still want to have happen. And the way the bubble conditionals work is that if both of these are true, meaning this is hovered and dark mode is on, I'm gonna move this down because I want this one to override. Now we're on the arrow icon. And actually, let me go ahead and I'm just gonna update. We did arrow collapse, shell, menu item, a menu item link that is. So this link one here, we've done that. Next up, we have this dark mode arrow icon. And so we'll look at this one, this arrow icon. So that's turning this color. So we'll say we've got that one nailed. And it's the icon color in this one, right? So it's all slightly different. Some of them are icon color, some of them are background color, some of them are font color. Let's go ahead with this page background. That's gonna be this. So if we look for page, skipping around a little bit, but we'll basically, we have we have some nice stuff to help us on both uh, both things here. So here's the username one. That's gonna be this. We'll say we'll get the username here. And let's see, that was just from some testing. So we kind of already got that one there. And we'll go with that. And then next up, menu item text. So that's gonna be this menu item text here. When the current user dark mode is yes, we'll update it to that one. Get some testing on that one. Menu icon, I, icon, also the same color. So here under our icons, so menu icon, we'll add the conditional icon color, we'll change to that. And then our logo text and one special case. So here's our logo text. And I don't think I have the right color copied, so I might have to go get that. 
but actually it's going to be the same as these. They're all the same. Okay, cool. And so now let's handle our special case here with this logo image. So if we take a look at this image and we just note that if we were to apply styles over here for images, uh, they don't, they don't really work. Uh, meaning they don't work to change this image. The only way to change the property of what this image is. So this image is in kind of dark like this when it's when the background is white and we want it to be white when the background is dark. So when the current users dark mode is yes or yes rather then this stuff that was already set up from testing. All I'm saying there is that this is a special element that is not controllable by styles. Therefore, we go directly into this element and you might have elements like this on your on your page too. So if you need to take those as a one by one like this, then that's the way to do it. Okay, so now let's go and let's refresh the page here. And we have basically built. So here is our sidebar practice. And that is this one. And so it looks like we have some data stuff there, which I'm happy to have happen because it means that you might have something like that happen too. So let's see what's going on here. This is going to change auto binding on the parents thing of dark mode. And so here's why that's not working. We're running it as this user, Josh Karen, Joshua Karen. So here, Joshua uh, Karen. And we'll note that for this dark mode here, we'll want to set that to no. So whatever user you're having it running as, so I am running it as this user. And now, well, let's go ahead and refresh. Oh, and of course, the, the data source that we'll set here is the current user. So it's the parent elements thing. The parent elements is the current user. So make sure you grab that as well. Uh, okay. So it's good. It's good to denote those small things. I'm happy to have them come up and show us, you know, how we can uh, make sure that we're crossing all T's dotting all I's and that's, that's it. So, this is it for applying the dark mode hex colors with that toggle button. And again, if you're interested in learning how to do a SAS dashboard like this, a collapsible one with a bunch of different features. In fact, there will even be a flyout panel here. And uh, these are links so that people can navigate and open the tabs as they will with inside of your SAS app. Then go and check that out on the channel. And if it's not there, feel free to shoot me a message. I'll be happy to give you early access to it. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Subscribe to the channel for more tips about Bubble. And thanks so much for watching.